Well, good afternoon to you again. I hope everybody's all right. It's, weather's changed a bit now, a bit cooler. I think it's a bit better, really, but a bit cooler. But uh, be out clapping tonight for all the people that have worked so hard to keep us, well, keep us safe, keep us well. Now, um, this little one I got today is called Parsnet Wine. Father and mother had visitors staying over from down Tuckermill. Richard Henry was told to he mind behave himself and take the parrot out to the back kitchen because he had been searing all day. Feather said, leave that bird alone. I think it did sound nice and homely. But mother said, no, and out he had to go. After tea, they were sitting round the fire because toward and all that ought. And Feather asked if they ever noticed a dawbeck was quick as lightning to get out of ugly corner. Like boy Willie, do we mean? asked Richard Henry. Yes. Last week up bow, there was a great long piece of brave sized timber and the men had sawed off a short end to make the length they wanted. Same boy Willie coming up with a barra, one of the men offered to bet a shillin he couldn't lift the short end up on his barra. Yes, I can, but let's have the bob first. The man go him the money and after a brave struggle, boy Willie won. Well, now you've gotten up in your barrow, said the man. May as well take up my place. You do know where I'd live. Last house round the corner. Off started boy Willie. But just as he got outside in the road, who should be coming up the road long was Captain. Hello, says Captain. And where are you going with that wood? Oh, up your place, sir. All right, but don't be long, mind. Now, if that had been me, said Feather, I should have tumbled over the barrow. How do we get on with the woman next door? asked the man from Tuckermill. I believe I know she. Oh, so so. Like the dressmaker said it. But between you and me, replied Mother, I'd have called her lazy. Only yesterday she wasted two hours talking with me over the garden wall. Now you must taste my parsnip wine, I made. Tis some good. Uncle Annie was here the other night and lowered half a bottleful. Yes, he did. Slept for two days and two nights, but wasn't in his own bed. Now his house and the next door are what you might call cledged together, and the same key will fit both doors. Uncle Annie opened the wrong one, went up bed, and was soon fast asleep. They threw out a bucket of water over him. He only turned over and said, Raining, is it? And went back sleep again. They tell me he got bags of money, but that don't bring no happiness. That's true, agreed Feather. Money do only help to make him miserable in comfort. Look, there's boy Willie going up along. Call in, Richard Henry. Let's have a bit of fun. Boy Willie was soon inside and asked to have a glass of wine. I like drink out of a jug of home, said he. I'll get one, whispered Feather, and tell him he's welcome. Plenty more down back kitchen. After boy Willie had drunk a jug full or two, Feather was trying to keep up with him, but there was three he was three scants behind. He started to sing, and they all had some handsome time. At last mother shouted, Time, gentlemen, please. Tis nine o'clock. See, boy Willie as far as the gate, will he, Father? He soon returned and reported, He's all right, gone up long by himself, but who he's talking Walking along upside, um, I don't know. They heard next day he reached the top of the road, and when he got under the old street lamp, what was there, what was still light on, he took his boots off and started to undress. On comes a policeman and asks what he was doing there. Go in bed. Somebody's in, because I can see the light upstairs. This is just a little poem um, about the copper house factory. Near fifty years are past and gone since Copperhouse factory went on. Much blossom and much fruit were seen, which yielding many years hath seen. When with full work this factory rung, it was good times for everyone. The mines throughout the neighbourhood produced ores both rich and good. With plenty work for boys and men, hundreds were employed then. The fires shining day and night, the flues and furnaces were bright. 
six days a week and off and off ten more, the moulders did their work so sure. Fitters and pattern makers too, both day and night had much to do. Cylinders and cylinder cores, I've seen them built and cast by scores. The massive engines made complete and often many tons their weight. The blacksmiths and the boilermen did use their hammers active then. The engine men worked with delight and kept the steam up day and night. The lusty hammer then was sounding its echo through the place rebounding. While ropers spun their wind rope strong or made their cables firm and long. Ships too were built and sent away to trade upon the wide, wide sea. The drivers with their noble team, with wagons loaded, oft were seen. The keys were filled with copper ore and coal for mines a mighty store. And trade and commerce did prevail within the port and town of Hale. The company were rich in lands from Benton League to Rivera Sands. But some are dead and some gone away, but this the factory did decay. The life of trade then soon was gone, the day of sorrow followed on. Man after man, boy after boy, were doomed elsewhere to seek employ. The keys were sold and houses too, such changes none in hail ne'er knew. The factory likewise will be sold, and farms and houses we are told. How many families now are left, with fathers of their work bereft? Near four hundred souls are led, to suffer for the want of bread. Forty-four years I laboured there, the truth to you I do declare, and now my age is sixty-nine, t'was there I spent most of my time. Thank you very much.